Sometime a while ago I got an offer, 170k for a data scientist position. And in this video I'm gonna share with you everything. First, my interview process. Second, questions that were asked. And third, how to answer those questions best from my perspective. And ultimately why I decided not to accept that offer. Hi, my name is Andre. I'm a data scientist and on this channel I talked about how to make best of your career and how to make best in your life. And welcome. The company, I'm not gonna tell you its name, but it makes game in VR kind of like Roblox. They're like maybe two or three big names in that field, so you can probably guess. And I found them on this great website, Hiring Cafe. It, it, this is not an ad, it's just a great website. What it does, it scrapes all of the company's websites for job openings and it puts them on on single job board. It's the best job board there is, better than LinkedIn or Indeed. So I found this position. And the first thing I did before I applied is I tweaked my CV to match what they were looking for. Because I had an extensive background in product data science. I never had experience with VR games. So I had to highlight some of my experience in the past that were related to gaming. That was a first. And second, I had to tweak some of my bullet points to specific challenges and responsibilities that they have. Then my application was a success and came screen call from HR. It's gonna be easy breezy if you know how to talk and if you can answer basic questions, why, why this company, why you, but you have to, on these kind of calls, always give specific motivation. What drives you about that particular company. I used to give an answer that was wrong. It was more about like what environment I want to work in and it was more generic. So the HR would ask me like, why do you want to work at this company? And I would answer like, I want to work at a place where I can make impact and when I can do great projects and yada yada, etc. And this is not a good enough answer because this is not specific to one particular company. Like they're all in love with their company mission and company culture. You have to find that one thing that separates the company from the rest and you have to sell it to them as your motivation. For me, it was I connected really deeply with their mission and what kind of games that they're using. And I talked about some of my past experience, which correlates to that. You have to stand out, even though the questions are basic and generic, here you have to stand out in order for you to go further. Then the second interview, once you pass that, is a technical screen with a hiring manager. And it was SQL challenge, which is fairly easy. If you know group buys, if you know window functions, you're gonna do just fine. Like the most challenging thing about SQL is that you have to communicate all the way through and you have to not make stupid mistakes. When you code live, you know that it's really easy to make a mistake here and there. So, but the number one mistake that people make is go straight to coding. Like you see the problem, you don't start coding. You start asking questions first then you start laying out your plan, then you start laying out your assumptions, and then once you get all of that, only then you start to code. And the coding part is actually easy, but they do not look for somebody that can code perfectly. Usually in this kind of challenges, they look for somebody that understands what they're doing, somebody that can communicate what they're doing. And then the second part, I think it was one of the most recent problems that they had and they presented it in form of a case. Basically, when you're interviewing for a data scientist position, there are a limited number of problems that you're gonna be asked. So first is like investigate a problem. Some metric is down, what happened? Like you have to give an answer. This is one type of a problem. The second type of a problem, which is quite frequent, measure a success. So we launch a new feature or new product, how do you measure it? And it goes deep in how you can define and create new metrics and how well you understand different metrics and trade-offs, etc. Third one is opportunity season. How you define when there is an opportunity for something new and how you can tie data to a real product opportunity. And fourth is design an experiment. When you have a product case during your interview, it's either gonna be one or any combinations of those. So for me, it was first 
<laughs> we went through all of those first like we have an opportunity here what kind of like ideas do you have and then how well if we do launch one of your ideas how would you measure success and how would you define and measure experiment key here is not to get everything right the same as with coding challenge they look uh, for people who are able to articulate, who are able to communicate, who are able to give structured answers. No answer is going to be perfect. But if you talk through a chain of thought and if you explain like I chose this metrics because one, two, three, and I realize that there are these trade-offs, basically what they're trying to get from you there is whether or not you can be flexible, apply your experience to different situations. Because some people, for example, they... Uh, junior specialist they just learn their metrics and they're like well there's conversion there is this there is that but you always have to go one step deeper than that what i advise you to do here and what i did before this interview is to sit with chat gpt or any ai and just try to brainstorm what kind of metrics would i measure here and there because it's really going to be important for you to understand the product through and through. And if you do that, if you have enough knowledge of the said product, and if you've done your preparation in advance, then what is left is just to slowly communicate and get through the case. If you're stuck at some point, you can ask help from your interviewer, it's gonna be fine. If you ask him there or here, it's gonna be okay. As the most common mistake that I see people making in these interviews is it just start rambling and rambling and rambling and if you have this deep thought that kind of goes nowhere there is no space for an interviewer to help you so if you're stuck you can say oh i'm stuck here because i reason this this and that but i don't know where to go from here and you can be given a little push <laughs> forward and then it's going to be easier but usually on technical screens like i had when you have like coding challenge and a case in one hour the bar is pretty low so I was able to pass that and then there was on-site which was four interviews, two product cases, one case more focused on uh, machine learning and regressions, more about how you use data like testing your inference skills, <laughs> how you use data to arrive at some conclusions. Second was experiment design, so like two of these were more case focused, one was specific SQL coding challenge and then one was behavioral. For coding challenge, like all of the same advice that I just told you applies. Like you just have to be attentive, work really slowly, list all of your assumptions because it's really easy to make a mistake when you just start coding and then you made some critical assumption and then you already got everything wrong. So it's, it's just easy. There are great websites to practice that too. Like there's Data Limur or Interview Query. Just practice enough and you're going to be fine. Then for behavioral, it's what most people really struggle with. Because everybody knows star structure, like situation, task, action, result. But then, like what kind of situation do I need to talk about? What kind of tasks, action, results? Like how do you actually put it all together? Because and how much or little I need to talk about each one of those points, people get confused. What I like to do to prepare best for behavioral interviews is I look through company website, I look at their mission, I look at their values, and then you prepare your stories that are centered around those values. So for example, the value that they have in their company is like be flexible. And you have to show throughout your stories with some actions that you were flexible. That one plan was initially like this, and then you changed it, and then you adjust it to the rapid changes of environment. So you have to get stories that have like four or five of these points where you're like showing signaling, it's called signals to the interviewers that you possess this value or quality or something like that. And when you construct your stories uh, with like company values in mind first, then it's much easier for you to understand what's being asked for. And then a bit about structuring those stories that get asked to you, like describe me a time when you had a challenging project or describe me a time when you had conflicting deadlines, etc, etc. When you focus on what to tell in your story, you have to give context. The interviewers, they have no prior knowledge of you. They don't know how senior you are or junior you are. They don't know anything about 
your projects. So you have to set the bar first really high. You have to describe like the project or the situation that was critical to the company or that could bring a lot of revenue, etc., etc. If you in your words, when you start to describe your project, sound like it was not a big deal, then it's going to be perceived like it was not a big deal. You have to, like in a few sentences, show why it's important for a company. Then you have to be specific and really specific about your actions. Like I did this and this and this. So this was a project. This was why it was important. And this was a challenge. And then I did one, two and three. Not us, not a team did this, not a company, not my manager told me to do. I did that. And then once you talk in through result, you have to, if you can, of course, you have to quantify it. Like why as it is a big challenge that you set in the first part is officially resolved. It's a success. It's this much money saved or this much money earned or pick some metric that like increased or decreased as a result of your actions. You have to have tangible result in the end. And then my piece of advice to you, when you're talking about some box project, like describe me a time when you had to make a difficult decision, for example, and you're speaking about immediate results that happened right after your project, always tied to long-term impact to the company. Like there was a problem in communications that led to you or your team failing a deadline. And the question is how you overcame that. And after you answer those questions, like give like two or three sentences in the end, how you handled this issue in the long term. Like the issue, it didn't happen out of nowhere. Like <laughs> it came from somewhere. And you need to show that not only you handled this fire well, that you also prevented future fires. Do you get what I'm saying here? And if you do all of that, you're going to be fine on your behavior. Then for a product case, one of those experimental design was similar to the challenge that I described to you before. We want to release this feature. Describe what kind of metrics you would use, how you would set up an experiment. Like result of experiment came in and it's not conclusive. What would you do? How would you communicate those results? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the second one, a focused on machine learning was more challenging. It was more about how we can build prediction mechanism for one of the metrics. And it went deep into like, what kind of data would you use? What kind of algorithm would you use? And usually if you know linear regression, logistic regression, like random forest, if you know different metrics like precision and recall that are related to these algorithms, one of the biggest challenges here, I always get asked is which data would you use? You want to build linear regression models, that's fine. But what kind of data? Describe me a data set. And here you have to be confident. Like you have to give specific, like this data set, we would have, for example, two or three tables. One of the data sources are going to be this, and then the second one is going to be that. And then we're going to get a table that's going to have these fields, like user ID, for example, then, I don't know, this metric, that metric, this value. And then from that, I would use that for my linear regression model or for my any other prediction model that you would choose. So be familiar with all of the terms. Uh, and what they're looking for is if you can actually get it step by step. And a lot of the times they're going to ask you a trick question in the end. Like, what if you run this model and then you get this kind of result? Like, what would you optimize for? Precision or recall? Why? What if you see some metric like R square adjusted and it's this value, like how would you handle uh, different problems? And I actually, how would you handle multi-clinearity and other problems that might arise? And aside from technical knowledge, they just want to make sure that you know what you're doing, that you had experience with that in the past and you're going to be fine. And then after I was done with those four interviews, I got an offer. Like in just like four days, they sent me an offer, they said, you're amazing. We want you on board. But I was not happy because I thought that, well, I got 173K, which is a lot. But then there are options, not shares, and options that are basically not worth anything. It's paper money. And why would I go to this company for 173 and then some paper money? 
I'm sure that I can get better offer down the road. I tried to negotiate with them, but they said, well, we have a fixed level. Initially they said, well, maybe we can do something with it. Then they said, well, maybe we don't. And I just thought that this offer was too low to switch my current job and start a whole new adaptation process. But I don't know, I really enjoyed the company. I really like what they do. The main pain point for me is not enough compensation to justify transitioning to a new area. So I don't know, it was a great experience. Uh, definitely got practice out of it and could bring that to you. And write in the comments, would you accept that offer? And if it was helpful to you, please leave a like and subscribe. And good luck with your next interview. I wish you only the best. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.